In this video, we're going to look at PSR for auto loading with PHP. Now, if you have no idea about what PSR for is, or even what auto loading into your project using Composer is, don't worry, we'll have covered that by the end of the video. So the first thing to really have a look at is the PSR for spec on phpfig.org. So if you want, head over to this website and just check out the specification. And I'm going to be referring back to these different points throughout the video. Now, you're also going to want Composer to be installed. If you understand what Composer is and you already have it installed and you know how to use it, then that's fine. Now, once you do have Composer installed, make sure it's working by just running Composer and you'll see a list of the commands here. That's all we really need to get going. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building up a basic directory structure for our application inside of this empty PSR4 directory. You can call this directory whatever you need. It doesn't really matter what this is called. It's what's within it that's important. And the first thing that we're going to look at is how you might typically structure your application and load in classes. Then we're going to look at how you might use the class map in Composer to load in classes. And finally, we're going to move on to PSR4 auto loading. And we're going to be namespacing our classes and setting up our directory structure so it follows PSR4 specifications. So the first thing then is to look at the uh, traditional way you might structure your application. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with this, but let's take a look. So I'm going to create a new folder in PSR4 called App. And this is where we're going to store things like our models, maybe controllers, things like that. Now inside of here, like I just said, you might have a models directory. And we'll create an example model in here just maybe for a user. So let's say user.php. So let's define this class and we'll make use of this in just a moment and we will create maybe a constructor on here and just for now let's do a die and say hello. So inside of your directory then let's create a new file and this will just be where we access everything so in index.php. Now generally what you'd do is you'd have some kind of start file or initialization file that you require in everything that you need. And that usually lives within some kind of app directory. It really varies depending on what framework you're using or how you work. So I'm going to call this start.php. So in start.php you might, for example, start sessions, uh, connect to your database, you know, it could be anything. But what we're going to do here is just require in our user model. So we're already within the app directory, so we just say require in models user.php. Now, from any file that we work on, we can go ahead and require in our start file. So that's in app called start.php. And then we might say user equals new user. And because we have our construct on here, then you'd expect this to just show hello. So that's the basic way of doing things. But obviously this is a little bit funny because you're going to have to maybe duplicate this down or create some kind of PHP autoloader to autoload everything in. And this isn't ideal. There are better ways to do this. So the alternative solution, and really not a bad solution at all, is to utilize Composer and dump a autoload file that automatically pulls in any new classes that you create. So for example, inside of our PSR4 main directory, we're going to create a composer.json file. Now Composer is a dependency manager, if you're not too sure. So we usually use this to require in, say, any dependencies we need. Say you're working with dates, you might want to pull in carbon, which is a really popular way to manage dates. But we're not going to be looking at requiring in dependencies. We're going to be looking at specifically what we want to autoload within our project. So there are a couple of ways we can do this, but typically you might see something called a class map. And this is just an array within here of any folders that you want to automatically load in classes. So because we're outside of the app directory, all we need to do is say app models. So if you head over to your uh, command prompt or terminal, depending on what operating system you're using, at the moment I'm within my PSR4 directory here. So all I need to do is make sure that Composer is updated first of all. This is important when we go on to the PSR4 bit. I and mean, you can just use the self-update command for this. Uh, you can see at the moment I'm already using the latest version. 
Then what we want to do is we want to use the dump autoload command, which will basically dump our autoloader within a vendor folder. And basically this means that we can then load in that one file and Composer will keep track of any new files that we add to the directories that we've defined. So we say Composer, dump autoload, and we pass the optimized flag as well. So you can see here it says generating optimized autoload files. If we look, we've now got this new vendor directory with a Composer folder in there, as well as any other dependencies you have in your project. And then we have this autoload file. Now don't worry about too much what this is actually doing here. Essentially, it's just loading in all of your dependencies as well as your class map. So in this case, we can substitute individually loading in different classes with just requiring in our vendor uh, autoloader. So in here, let's add our DIR and concatenate this on. We want to go back a directory because remember we're in the app folder and we want to load in vendor autoload.php. So let's check out what this does, and there we go. So we get exactly the same result. And the same is if we wanted to add a new file in here. Let's say we wanted to add topic.php. We might have a topic class in here, again with a similar structure. I'm not going to uh, bother filling this out. Um, basically, what this is going to do now is when we run dump autoload again, we can go ahead and over on our index page, we can substitute this in like so, and that gives us the topic class. We obviously don't have any output here. So this is um, an example of how you might do things within your project, and this makes things uh, a lot easier. Let's just get rid of this topic.php file for now. Now, when we use PSR4, we do something a little bit different inside of our JSON file. We use the PSR4 specification both in our directory structure and how we namespace our individual classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in a, in a moment, just remove our models directory and start to create out our vendor folder and then subfolders within this, ending up with our class. If this doesn't make sense, let's head over to the uh, specification and take a look why this is. So a point two here, 2.2, you can see we've got um, a fully qualified class name has the following form. We have a namespace name. Now this is essentially your application name, your company name, or your name, anything that really defines what this project is. And then we have sub namespace names. This could be uh, basically two, uh, one or more. So, you know, it could be like repositories and then inside of that user and then something else. And we'll take a look at this an example. Um, we are then ending with just the class name. So, if this still doesn't make sense, let's go ahead and actually look at an example of, of what we're going to do here and how this makes sense. So let's close off all of the files that we've got open and let's sort of start kind of afresh. So I'm going to delete the models folder. Now the reason I'm deleting the models folder is because models could pretty much apply to anything and it's kind of restricting us in a way. So the way that we do this is because we're going to be namespacing things, and if you don't know what namespacing is, that's fine, we'll cover that too then this uh, is going to make a lot more sense. So inside here, we're going to follow the PSR4 specification and we're going to give it our vendor name. So remember, the PSR4 directory I have up here doesn't matter what this is called. That's not important. What matters is what we have mainly inside of our app directory. So we've now got our vendor name here. Inside of this, we would then categorize things that we need. Now, this can be anything. It would apply completely differently to different projects. So, you know, don't worry if this doesn't make sense. It can be anything. If you're working in Laravel, you might have a filters folder or, in fact, in any application. But I'm going to say repositories. So inside of here now, I'm going to create a new file. And this is actually going to be my class. So let's say we had a user repository and I'm going to call that user repository.php and then I'm going to go ahead and define my class so user repository and then we'll do the same as we did before we'll create just a constructor here which kills the page and just says hello so inside of index.php this line of code is now longer uh, is no longer valid so let's just remove that but it's important to note now that we are working with a PSR4 directory structure because we remember we have our vendor name, then we have our sub name, and then we have our class. If in repositories you wanted to create a new directory, 
to place this file you could do that would just be uh, additional subclass uh, subnames so we need to namespace this user repository uh, in, in order for it to be uh, part of the PSR4 or follow the PSR4 specification so namespacing this means we categorize this under code course and then you probably already guessed repositories so repositories and that's it so now this user repository class is part of code course repositories now you might be thinking well why is this useful surely it's more code to write etc etc well let's take a look at how we might instantiate this uh, in our index.php file and then we'll look at how we actually auto load this in uh, using psr4 auto loading inside of our composer.json file so inside index.php in fact let's go over to start.php remember we've got our auto loader in here that's important to note so inside of our index.php file we would do something like user equals new user repository but obviously we require a namespace here so it would just be exactly the same code course repositories user repository now obviously this isn't going to work because it can't find this class we're not auto loading this in so you might now be thinking well what's the point of putting all this here surely it's making more code for ourselves it is but we know now that it's part of a certain structure so up here we can say use code course repositories user repository as user repository now of course when you're importing this user repository you don't need to be as explicit as this I've just done it for simplicity what you could do is remove all of this and just say you wanted to use code course repositories in which case it would automatically know that user repositories was part of this repositories here but we'll leave it as it is just so it makes a little bit more sense and now this will allow us to instantiate this as part of this namespace which keeps everything nice and tidy it is a little bit more code but it means that your application is going to be so much easier to manage as it scales up in size so now we need to work out how we load things based on the uh, namespace essentially in the directory structure of course what you could do is you could say app code course and then you could define say repositories like so now this would work if we just go ahead and dump the auto load again we head over to here it does exactly the same thing and this is working but we want to make this a little bit easier for ourselves because what happens if we create another folder inside of here let's say filters and then in here we have another file we're going to have to return back to this and we're going to have to go ahead and update this with uh, the new structure so we would have to say filters for example we don't want to do that we want to use psr4 auto loading in here let's just get rid of that uh, filters directory so in here what we do is we say auto load but we define that we want psr4 auto loading and in here what we need to do is give the namespace uh, the vendor namespace in this case we know it's code course so I'm just going to say code course we're going to do a double backslash here this basically means uh, well the, the purpose of this is because we need to escape the second backslash that's why it's double backslash and then we're going to provide the location to our code course directory so that's obviously app code course easy so this is all we need to do so now what's going to happen is because we're following the PSR4 specification it means if we create a say a new I don't know it could be anything a new folder in here called filters for example and then we have a new file in here called let's just pull this down auth filter.php and then we namespace this to code course and you've probably already guessed filters that means that when we go ahead and dump this it's automatically going to recognize the PSR4 uh, specification here because it's namespaced under filters it's got the vendor name so it's going to look inside code course filters and then it's going to find this auth filter class so we can use exactly the same um, method for this so let's just do a construct here just so we can test this example out in just a moment so let's kill this and say 
or filter. Now, at the moment, when we refresh the page, we get exactly the same result. This is expected because we've made an uh, adjustment to our composer file, but we haven't gone ahead and dumped the autoloader again. Now, when we take a look at this now, you see we still get the same result because what we've done is we've namespaced this to the specific directory structure and we're calling this user repository and it knows that because it's uh, PSR4 loaded that it should look for this uh, structure. So the same with the auth filter, because we've done exactly the same thing, if we were to say duplicate this line down and we were to say filters auth filter as auth filter we can do exactly the same thing here let's just get rid of this one actually and we're going to say auth filter like so and there we go we get exactly the same result so obviously this is a useless example but it shows you how you can structure your application to first of all be more manageable and second of all, use the PSR4 standard for loading everything in. It makes everything a lot easier when you're creating larger applications. Of course, this isn't required for any application at all, but it does help when you are creating even a small application that you anticipate to be a lot larger in the future. So just to run over the specification, the fully qualified class name must have a top level namespace. That's essentially code course that we created uh, under here, code course, and namespaced it here. And then of course we have our sub namespace names, which is in this case filters, and in this case repositories. But like I said, if you had another directory, uh, you could just continually namespace that. Finally, we end up with the class name itself, which again is the fully qualified class name, must have a terminating class name. And there are a couple of other bits to the specifications as well, which are worth reading. So PSR4 then is improved auto-loading within applications. And we've seen an example of doing this and how helpful it can be when you are building something.